Hey everyone and welcome to another quick take video. Today we're going back to the ASX and have a look at uh, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, so CBA. So it's a bank. Um, if I say bank, I'm sure you know what bank does. Uh, it lend out money to people who needs money, buying a car, buying a house or mortgages, you know, setting up businesses and all of that. And they get back money and interest. I'm sure you understand what a bank is. So I won't be doing much on the profile. Uh, if you want to know specifically how the banks operate, I guess you have to look into its uh, annual report and really understand like, um, you know, where its strength is compared to other banks. So you can do some kind of analysis between the two banks, uh, to be in different banks. Uh, but um, CBA is one of the big four banks in Australia. And um, uh, from my personal experience, it's one of the uh, better banks, really. It, uh, it has great customer service. Its online platform is sleek, fantastic, well done. The app, the mobile app itself is fantastic. It, you know, it's really well organized. And, and the reason for that is that um, during the, the, the uh, like the internet phase, like when the internet kind of starting to take off, um, Commonwealth Bank was one of the, well, the first company, really, the first bank, really, to kind of like... Um, adopt that technology and and really have so they have you know they're a few miles ahead of the, their competitors so like um comsec is their trading platform uh it's definitely much easier to use and um the ui itself is definitely more user friendly than um, anz from what i've heard obviously if you have uh, dedicated brokers then it's uh they're going to be much better because um um you know that's what they're de dedicated to do uh but you know if you're starting out investing and you already have a commonwealth bank account and you want to just start com comsec is not too bad um the international trading platform is a little bit uh you know iffy really it, it's yeah i i mm, i've seen it experienced it not oh, great but um it does the job Cool. I hope it does. Um, anyways, let's jump straight into the financial ratios. So, so um, while I was doing that, let's have a look at uh, anything interesting from history. Listed September 1991. Okay, great. Um, but the, the data doesn't even go back to 1991. You know, probably kept in ledgers and stuff like that. So, uh, oh yeah, PE ratio 20. Great. <clears throat> All right, P ratio of 20, fantastic. Going straight down to quick ratio, nothing. Current ratio, nothing. And wonder why. Um, dividend yield. Uh, because remember, quick ratio is the cash divided by current liabilities. So either they don't have cash on hand or they don't have any current liabilities. Dividend yield. 3.49%, um, this is a really funny number because um, if you think about it, it's a bank, right? And most people put money into the bank uh, like uh, for savings and getting um, return on interest and stuff like that. But it's probably be better if they put that money into the shares of the bank because they get paid more in terms of dividend than they do would on interest in the saving account. Obviously, there's risk in, uh, in, in in investing because, you know, if the shares price goes down, they might lose the money. So, you know, investing is all about timing. But I'm, I'm just saying it's quite funny that, um, you know, you get more putting money in, in into the bank um, as shares rather than into a saving account. I guess it's, it's again, it's... Um, it's what you get for taking a little bit more risk, right? Because you put in a saving account, um, you know, and they pay you 0.01%. If the share price goes down, you still have 10000 You know, let's say you got to put $10,000. You still got $10,000. Um, but if you put $10,000 in shares, price dropped by half, then you only got $5,000. And 3% dividend really means jack all. Um, so way, uh, pros and cons, really. Um, but yeah, but that's why if you pick at a great time, buy really low. If you buy lower than now, then I guess you get a uh, higher dividend yield. Um, well, you do not guess it's mathematics unless they tr decide to reduce their um, dividend per share. But I want what I want to look at is 
franking 100% franking so that's great so they they pay tax already before they distribute the dividend so um, you actually get some tax benefits from that so you might get um franking franking credits back so one of the really good thing it, it was very controversial very contentious issue in australia uh but from i'm sure from you hear from my tone it's um i think it's a great thing okay cash flow let's look cash flow in the quarterly um quarterly yeah it looks really good look at that it um you know three times yeah three times look at that uh for the last uh six months investing activities yep so it is getting money back from cash flow items it's uh paying back debt now for those who knew or um, not sure what kind of debt a bank has um, retail banks like commonwealth banks actually borrow money from other banks so these these special banks they're not retail banks like reserve banks so um, the reserve bank of australia is uh, one of those banks that cba and other banks borrow money from uh, federal reserve is australian no it's not australian u.s bank um re, you know federal reserve reserve bank of um, the america and uh, that's where they they get money from and, and the reserve basically pre, um has uh, um like an overnight borrowing rate called the cash cash rate that um is very closely observed by a lot of people so uh, you know dr I, right now because of the pandemic the cash rate in australia is low and and um the the the, the chair of the rba um dr low i think i can't remember his first name not Rob Lowe, maybe it's Rob Lowe, I don't know. Um, anyway, it's the chair of RBA um, said most likely they're gonna keep it quite low. Um, the reason for that is, is because of the economic activities and, and the, 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 the repercussion going forward for the other banks. So if CBA borrow money um, from the Reserve Bank at a low rate, then they can pass on that discount to the uh, customers and um, if they can do that, have a more competitive product and more customers will come and borrow money from them. And then they have more uh, interest to collect really. Um, so um, not all the time, the, like retail banks like Commonwealth Bank, Westpac, ANZ, they, they pass on those discounts. Um, but but that's, that's, that's how the bank simplistic, simplistically that's how it kind of works. So, so where, where I'm coming from is that uh, they're paying back debt for money they borrowed from the reserve banks. They could borrow from other sources too. Cool, the net change in cash. I'm just click over to the annual and um, yeah, look at that. Operating activities is um, where all the money is and seems like um, it makes up the majority of that. The net change in cash really gone up. Looking good. All right, balance sheet. Please load. Cool. Whoa, what is that? It's a one quadrillion. It's a lot of money. Um, no current liabilities. That's probably why it um it doesn't have a quick ratio because quick ratio is cash divided current liabilities. <clears throat> And but it has a lot of um, liability, like long term liability. So there's all the items there, and you want to have a look at it um, really closely and break it down. Um, right there, let's go over straight to the income statements, then we jump over to the chart. <clears throat> yeah, so okay, income statement, interest income. Yeah, so yeah, so they're collecting interest quite a bit. Let me just do it. All right, interest incomes. I mean, consider a pandemic. It's not doing too bad. It's not lower than the previous year. And um, because uh, it probably didn't do as much, uh, well last year as it could have, because I think I think that's a statement that applies to a lot of businesses, is because in Australia. The, the, the banks and all the government kind of like forced uh, air quotes the banks to kind of defer collecting interest 
and uh, repayment. And they kind of follow suit. Like if one does it, the other kind of have to follow suit. Otherwise, they uh, they have really bad repercussion on their reputation. And some of these banks kind of uh, live on their reputation somehow uh, too. Because, you know, they, they want to stand out as like one of the big banks. All right, net income. Uh, they still make a significant amount of money. That's, what's that? That's $9 bi- trillion dollars. No, no, one nine billion. Oh, sorry, it's trillion, billion, trillion, a million, billion, trillion. Anyway, it's going. So, if I said quadrillion before, I meant trillion. Um. All right. So, it still make it made a lot of money. So, yeah, it's, that's what you look for in a business. Like, you know, you if you say like, hey, the banks make so much money, and what is it? One more big. It's it's a quite a capitalist. Um, concept isn't it you gotta get more money otherwise your competitor is gonna get the money and then you don't have the money to invest in more um, technology invest in more things and then um, and then you don't innovate and then you don't grow you don't grow then you decline you decline you go out of business so um, a business in some sense has to make money it can't plateau um, all right cool jump straight over to the uh, chart so here is the chart, and from the look of it, um, so this is the highest point. That's the point today. Looks like it's hitting a resistance. I, uh, you know, there's another re- um, resistance up here if they can break through. But the upside is, uh, you know, um, it's not it's not looking great in in terms of upside. What I'm saying there is that um, it's probably not a good time to buy, even though it's a really good looking company. Um, there's going to be a lot of people selling. Especially people who bought down here, traders uh, and traders probably uh, who bought down here probably want to get out now to move their money to more exciting assets because it looks like it's going to plateau. Um, and I think from the Fibonacci that I drew earlier, you can see that it's probably going to pl- come back down to the 78 or 61 mark. If we move our Fibonacci over to this point here, you can see that it um, it hits this point. Um, so if this was a 100% uh, mark, it, it retraced all the way back to the 50. So there's a possibility that will happen. Um, and so at the moment, I probably say I won't go jump in, um, even though dividend yield is really attractive. I think I'm going to put my money in some other assets and see if uh, there's a lot uh, you know, there's an upside to that, uh, a better upside. Um, but if it drops down to maybe the 61 mark, I'll probably consider jumping in uh, if I have any free cash, uh, probably around 2K and just let it ride and um, take back my principal once I made sufficient profit and let the profit run. I think it's going to keep going up. It just I don't believe that it's going to, I think it's got to retrace a little bit first before it, it continue to go up, at least to this point anyway. If it does go up to that point, I think it's going to retrace back down. So, um, But um, there's going to be a lot of selling pressure and the buying pressure because it's too, like it's more expensive, right? And so people's like, ah, like me, right? People analyze, oh, you know, it's hitting resistance. So so you got to analyze myself, you know, I say you as in in general you you got to analyze um what you're thinking and you kind of have to then generalize it is it something that uh, other traders and investors would think so i think um uh, i have a pretty good intuition sometimes i'm wrong but most of the time i feel like i am i'm pretty spot on um but you know only time will tell right and and you need to develop that your own intuition about things and you know anyways my point is that i feel like this is um hitting um too high for people to decide to jump in i think it has to retrace a little bit uh, and then just like cool off right it had a great run especially during this um, announcement of 9.6 billion dollars of um, net income so you know it, it has to cool off a little bit and and when it cools off i think that's when you jump in so i say maybe i'll review this in two weeks um but um, I can like I said alert for when it hits at least maybe the seventy eight percent mark or maybe the volume goes spike crazy um, on the upside then you know I might consider jumping in but at the moment um, I see no reason to rush here and just just let it run just let just let it fizzle out a little bit and uh, some room to grow especially when you want to buy it because it's all about timing for uh, for trading anyways uh, oh and uh, if you look at the MACD it's um, 
it, it's kind of saying like, hey, I'm on the way down, don't buy me. Uh, but that's not the only indicator. You got to put in a few other things. Um, uh, so, um, you know what? Let's do that. Let's get out of here and put in an indicator maybe not atr just uh, not not an atr really to strength index and see what it says oh. how come i can put two Ooh, fantastic i didn't know i can put two uh indicator financial because um anyways not important okay macd there you go coolies uh, ATR say it's over. It was oversold. It's coming down, so that's that's fine. No problem. Anyways, um, that's pretty much it for this quick take on uh, Commonwealth Bank of Australia. If you like what you see, please share, subscribe, give it a like. Um, otherwise, uh, if you have any comments, um, leave it down below. If you like what you see and you wanna suggest an uh, you know a company that I do a quick take on uh, again, put in the comment. And that's pretty much it. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, um, and uh, hope you have a successful time trading. Bye.